Month after month, day after day, the Syrian regime has bombarded ordinary Syrians with lethal consequences. Nothing has stopped the assault or the impassioned pleas we've heard from inside. This is a life we've got used to. Rockets, bullets, killing children dead in the street, body parts. Why isn't the world helping us? Where's the humanity in the world? Where's the freaking UN? And just last night on this program, the sound of desperation from one man and home. I mean, if they wait more, one or two weeks more, they don't have to save us then. They just can, can, can come here to homes and bury us. Against that backdrop, dozens of nations met in Tunisia today to decide what to do next. So was there progress towards the action many in Syria have been begging for? Our Middle East correspondent Sasha Petrusik is here now. So Sasha, the mood in the international community seems a bit different tonight. Wendy, the crisis in Syria seemed to take on a new urgency today among the countries meeting in Tunis with some frustrated voices calling for armed intervention. The images from Syria itself were as horrifying today and as familiar as they've been for weeks now. Somehow, in the middle of all this, the Red Crescent was able to rescue some of the wounded. But with the cries for help intensifying here, and with hundreds of Syrian government supporters protesting outside a hotel in Tunis, inside the Friends of Syria, as these countries call themselves, are clearly split. All want Syrian President Bashar al-Assad to go, but how to achieve that? The head of the Arab League called for serious and effective international action, but without outside military intervention. As unlikely as it seems, they just want Assad to stop shooting. Expecting and asking for uh, ceasefire is uh, a prerequisite for a peaceful solution. Then the plan is to send UN peacekeepers in a joint mission with the Arab League. Fed up with what they call international inactivity, the Saudis stormed out. The Saudi foreign minister was asked if he would support arming the Syrian opposition. His answer? I think it's an excellent idea. I think it's an excellent idea. The Qataris also support sending in troops to impose peace in Syria. That's the first time any major player has gone quite that far. For now, the U.S. does not agree with that. Instead, it's backing the Syrian National Council, a major opposition group. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton made a show of meeting today. It's not clear how representative the group really is, but for her, it's better than Assad. Assad can still make the choice to end the violence, save lives and spare his country from descending further into ruin. Clinton also blasted Russia and China for backing Assad, calling their support despicable. Neither of those two countries was at the meeting today. And since they're really the only ones who have any influence in Damascus, it's not clear how much impact today's warnings or threats will have. Wendy? All right, thanks, Sasha. Sasha Petrusik.